shine your light in us and we shine to the world so that others may see you and glorify you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go for it, Carrie. One, two, one, two, three, four.
that gets me going. Before we continue singing, please turn to your neighbor, give each other a warm La Habra Christian Church welcome. Mm. And if you see someone you haven't met before or haven't seen in a long time, now is your chance. And later, but now also. Amazing.
it is well with our soul. And Lord, we don't sing that because everything is perfect. We don't sing that because we don't have trouble. But Lord, we sing that because we know that even in spite of the things that we go through, you are our peace. And so, Lord, we say it is well with our souls, knowing that our souls rest in you. God, I pray for each one in this room that today, as we meet together with you and with each other, that you would be our hope, you would be our peace. In the middle of whatever storm or trial, tribulation that anybody is going through in this room, Lord God, that we will rest in your embrace. Would you meet us here, Lord, by the power of your spirit and calm the hearts of all in this room that we might fix our eyes on you today. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, it's so good to worship together, isn't it? I feel like we've already uh, reached a, a intimate place of worship with the Lord and with each other, and I'm thankful for that this morning. Thank you for being here today. My name is Tyler. I'm the lead pastor of Wahaba Christian Church and leading a team of pastors and, and staff members that are, uh, it seems like, growing all the time, and, and, and we're having a great time here at this church. God's doing a lot of great stuff here. And uh, he's growing our church, and we're thankful for that. So the pastors at Lahava Christian Church are thankful to be able to be your shepherds. We appreciate that opportunity with you guys. The other reason that I know that God's doing a lot of good stuff is that I have about 15 announcements to make. And so <laughs> that's, uh, I guess, a good thing. If, if it, it means that there's a lot of good things going on, that God's doing good stuff. But we'll try to go quickly through them because I want to be respectful to your time. Uh, the first is that if you are here for the first time, we want to welcome you, and there's a a stainless steel coffee mug in the back that we'd love to have you grab on your way out as a way of saying thank you from us to you for visiting La Haba Christian Church today. I've already given two of those out to two of my friends who are here, friends that I haven't seen in 10 years, which I'm thankful for that. Yes, amen, praise God. Also want to let you know, uh, Treasures Campaign, we've been doing this Treasures Campaign now for several months. Uh, that's a way for us to uh, give above and beyond our normal tithes and offerings in order to uh, sort of upgrade our facility. And so wanted to let you know we had started with a goal of $20,000 to be raised in our treasures campaign, and we are well over halfway there. About $11,500 has been raised so far. Yes, yes. So I want to say thank you to all of you that have given towards that. It's been a, an amazing uh, impact already. We, we, we New paint and wood and paneling, and we've got new things coming here next week you'll be looking at. Uh, there's new lighting in the gym with the kids, and so if you haven't seen the new lighting, uh, some of the treasures funds have gone to help out with that cause as well, and more is on the way. So we just want to say thank you for what you've given in that, and let's keep going on that so that we can reach the goal, reach the goal that we set out to reach. Also want to let you know, uh, that we are looking for a, uh, a person or two to work the camera in the back. So our sound team is doing awesome. We got new sound equipment and all of that, but we need somebody that would be a specific, specific, specific blah, 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 specified camera person. And so it can be a, not just a camera man, but a camera woman. Uh, we, we don't discriminate about that kind of thing around here. And so a camera person, and if you're interested in being uh, dedicated towards that end, we'd love to have you talk with me or with Kurtz, and we'll get you set up with that. We do live stream our services every week, so many of you uh, participate and take a look at that as well. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, which is awesome. Yes, yes. Uh, Larry likes Mother's Day, which is good. I know many of you do. Uh, we we want to just put voice to the fact that Mother's Day is a time of celebration, but it is also a time of pain for many people. And so we want to let you know that this will be a great place to either celebrate or mourn together next week. We will have times of celebration. We will also embrace the fact that God has walked us through the pain of this life. And so if you are a woman who has pain in this area, we want to let you know we'd like for you to come next week also, and we'll celebrate all of women in this place next week. So one of the ways we're going to do that, amen, yes, one of the ways we're going to do that is we're going to have a meal together. It's going to be catered, uh, so you don't have to bring any food or anything. It's just going to be catered by an outside restaurant. It's going to be awesome. So we hope you'll join us next week for Mother's Day. We also want to let you know 
is uh, that next week there is a trip going down to Baja, Mexico with Strong Tower Ministries. And so Mike Jacobs is leading that effort. It's an overnight trip, Saturday and Sunday, and they're getting really close to opening up the Saloe Wellness Center, which will be a medical center for the community. If you'd like to participate in that, uh, we'd love to have you go down with Michael next week. Just let Michael know or myself, and we'll get you hooked up with that. We also want to let you know that next week is the last week to bring back your baby bottles for the WPCC campaign for helping out women's pregnancy care clinic. And if if you've been uh, collecting uh, change and all that to put in the baby bottles, next week is the last week to bring those back so that we can give them that, and they'll, have, they'll come out in a couple of weeks and give us a report about how we did, okay? There's also some bottles back there still. If you, if you haven't started yet and you'd like to, you can pick one of those up on your way out and bring it back next week. Last thing that I have is that we have on May 19th at 3.30 p.m. that in this building, a barbecue for the youth and a movie night for the youth. So that's May 19th, 3.30 p.m. If you are a youth or if you want to come hang out with the youth and eat food and watch a movie, May 19th, 3.30 p.m. here at the church is the time to do that. Okay. Yolanda. Yolanda has something very special to say to you this morning. I just want to say I did this this morning. It doesn't get any easier. Now I see what you, where you're looking. I'm looking that way, so this is a little scary. Um, my name's Yolanda, and I just want to uh, share with you uh, the car show that's coming up on uh, June the 16th, and it's going to be from 9 to 2. Uh, Gilbert and I, my husband, we got involved with this church. We were looking for a church to call home back in 2013, and this was the third one we came to. And so um, one of the things that I really saw and really drew me here is I saw everyone had a smile on their face. Everyone was interacting, loving each other, and I thought, there's something different here. So as I listened to the word, uh, Sherman was uh, preaching that day, uh, the pastor, and uh, he said something that really made a difference in my life. He says, we're all born with a gift that God has given us, and it's our job to find our gifts and our talents and bring it and share it with others in a church environment. And it's not a church where you're put in a box and you have to live within the box. It's something that you grow and you just continue to grow with others. And so I thought, that's what I want. This is home, this is where I wanna be. Well, I had to convince the husband, of course, you know, sometimes you gotta do it together, most of the time, but so Victor had a dream back in 2013, Victor. Stand up, Victor. He had a dream for a car show. He wanted to put a, the community together and, and, and a, a family environment. And so we got involved. We're car, car people. And so it's been a very truly blessing to be able to serve in that, in that talent of organizing. I'm an organizer. That's just what I do. So it's been a very good thing. So I, I am encouraging you all to be part of this. You know, sign up. I'll be out there, give you more information and sign up. We have many things to sign up to, to volunteer this year. I'm very happy to announce that we're going to give four $25 gift certificates for fuel raffling for the volunteers. Because if it wasn't for our volunteers, this wouldn't happen. Thank you. Thanks, Yolanda. Uh, I'd like to pray for all of these things that we've just mentioned. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we understand that God can do more in an instant than we can do with all of our preparation and trying to work these things out. And so we want to make sure that we ask the Lord to do his work in and through all of these things that we've just discussed. So I'll pray for that and also for our offering. So if you're collecting the offering, if you would uh, at this time be ready for that. And let's pray over these things. God, we do believe that you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. We believe that you are the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, uh, the one who has started a good work in us and will be faithful to complete it. So, Lord, with all of these things that we've mentioned, we pray that you would do your work, that your minutes and your purposes will come through in these efforts at La Habra Christian Church. Lord, for the campaign with WPCC, with the babies. Lord, for our treasures campaign, for the trip down to Mexico next weekend, for our Mother's Day events. Lord, for the time that we have together today in worship and for the car show that is coming up. For all of these things, God, would your spirit 
work in and through each of us as we seek to give to you uh, ourselves and to be led by you and to fix our eyes on you. God, for each one in this room, would you use, uh, use us according to your purposes, uh, for our growth and for your glory. And Lord, for this offering that we take now, I pray the same thing, that Lord, this would be your work, that whatever is given today with cheerful hearts would be used by you for the purposes of your kingdom and the work you're doing here at La Habra Christian Church in the city of La Habra and the surrounding cities and to the ends of the earth. Lord, we pray that you would be glorified in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. So this time, we just wanted to share this uh, song with you this morning. Uh, you guys all know Matt, right? <laughs> Matt was so cool. I, I asked him to join me with this song over text message, and he was just like, yeah. Uh, you guys, I don't know if you know this, but Matt is not just an amazing uh, sound person. He does sound for us most of the time, uh, all the time. He comes and you know, helps me out all the time, but he is an amazing vocalist. He's a great guitar player. He's an amazing human being. And um, I just thought it would be really fun to share this song with you, with him, because he's been an instrumental person in my life that God has used to just really bless me. And the song that we're gonna sing for you right now is called Say Amen, because it talks about life. And you know, life, I don't know about you guys, but life isn't always easy. Life can be really hard sometimes, and um, but God brings us through those moments, and he reminds us that he is God, and he is taking care of things, and for that, I just want to say amen. So, has, any, has anyone here ever been through some tough times? Yeah? And has God ever shown his, his life, his love for you through those tough times? If he has, can you say Amen. All right, this song is called Say Amen. So if you ever hear, we're going we're gonna to teach you a little part here. So it goes like this. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. That's your part. All right, here we go. Here we go. Joy in the middle of sorrow. He 
facing the storm, hold for tomorrow. See it time and time again. Just say amen. Even in the battle of shadows, when you feel alone and the unknown, say amen, say amen. Storms are raging. Stand on your not forsaken. Say amen. Say amen. Is there anybody here? Tell me, is there anybody here? Come on, say amen. Come on. All together now. And if there's anybody here who see his power, anybody here brought through. someone say that you what you agree with if you are saying right on just say amen feel free to say amen throughout the whole service if you feel like god is leading you okay amen, amen. when i say god is good you all say all the time god is good all the time. god is good all the time. and all the time amen to that amen. amen i'm pastor jason and i'm very very happy to share the word of god with you now, you might guess from the title of this message that you might already know what it's about. I mean, why, why did you doubt? So, don't doubt Jesus. End of sermon. <laughs> I, wish, I wish life was that simple. That all you got to do is, okay, just don't doubt Jesus. Okay, let's go home. But life is a lot more complicated than that and a lot more to deal with. I mean... Um, when you try real hard to get somewhere in life, and <laughs> you end up nowhere, and you say, Jesus, take the wheel, <laughs> but he's not doing anything. So I was like, whoa, whoa, come on, Jesus, do something. Come on, what's going on? Or have you ever prayed, God, if you're real, make this happen, but nothing happens? Or it happens not the way you want it to? Like, God, Come on. Come on, I'm here. I want you to do something. I mean, or maybe you, maybe you heard an amazing testimony. Or maybe God answered the prayer of a, of a friend. And you're like, God, what about me? God, why don't I get to see miracles? What about answering my prayers? God, I'm here. I'm asking. But nothing happens. And then God says, why did you doubt? What? What are you talking about? I've been here. I've been believing real hard. I'm having a lot of faith. What do you mean? What's... You're missing the point. <laughs> What's the point? What are you talking about? Well, let's get to the point. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 14. Matthew 14, verse 22 to 32. Now, this is a very familiar passage. We've heard it before. We've read it before. But let's really see what Jesus is talking about. Let's, let's go deeper into this passage. Matthew 14, 22 to 32. This is the word of God. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land fade by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. 
When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, he said, and cried out in fear. But, he, but Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Let me pray for us again. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. It is your word that sets us apart from people who just theorize about God. But we have the truth right here. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would go out once again and reveal the word to us louder than the words of man. God, would you not only let us hear the word, but help us to live it out that the word may become flesh in our very lives. Lord, help us to fix our eyes on you. And in Christ, let me pray this. Amen. Now, we just read this passage. Jesus sends the disciples off first. And the disciples have been rowing for hours. They're tired. They're exhausted. And according to this passage, right now it's about between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. It's in the middle of the night. It's cold. And as they're rowing and they're, and they're tired, they're exhausted, they see something coming towards them. It's like something white coming towards them. What? No, it's not swimming. It's, it's actually levitating. It, it's floating on the water. And, and they, it's closer and closer. And they scream. It's a, it's a ghost. No, they're not overreacting here. Like, and then Jesus says in verse 27, don't be afraid. What? You're crazy, Jesus. What are you talking about? Don't be afraid. Think about it. If you were on a boat at 3 in the morning, and, you, and it's dark, and in the distance, you see something coming towards you on the water, like the ring girl, like coming towards you closer and closer. You're going to scream. You're going to be very afraid. You're going to be pissing in your pants, okay? It's, they're not overreacting. I mean, this is, this is crazy stuff. What do you mean, don't be afraid? And in verse 26, Jesus, Jesus says, it is I. Actually, the Greek can be translated into Hebrew as I am. Does that sound familiar to any of you? In Exodus 3.14, God told Moses, My name is I Am. That's who I am. And Jesus uses the same words, denoting that, you know what? I am God. He is asserting his deity right here as he's walking on the water. He's saying, I am God. Therefore, don't be afraid. You know, walking on water is impossible. You don't need me to tell you that. The hydrogen bonds between the water molecules, I mean, whatever. Okay, it's just not going to happen. People don't walk on water. Walking on water is impossible. That's why we call it a miracle. And by this miracle, Jesus shows his authority over creation. And the theme of authority is one of the main themes of the book of Matthew. And he, and he ends his gospel by saying, all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus right here shows by this miracle that he, he could bend the rules of nature because he is the Lord of nature. This was also a preview of his power over death. You see, in Old Testament imagery, the sea or water represents death. And so, just like, in, just like everybody died in Noah's flood, or all the Egyptians were covered in the Red Sea. And so, water represents death. But right here, by walking over the water, it's like a preview of his power over death. You see, Moses had to wait till the Red Sea divided into two so he could cross, right? Well, Jesus did one better. He just walked over it. Jesus walks on water. He does the impossible because Jesus, Jesus is God. Remember that. And he's walking on the water, and then Peter, the loud mouth of the bunch, says, Jesus, if that's really you and you're not a ghost, Tell me to come to you on the water. Okay, Peter, it's really me. Come on out. And then Peter gets out of the boat and into the water. And he's actually 
walking on the water. He's actually, he's doing it. He's actually walking on the water. And this is great. And I wonder how Peter felt at that moment. At that moment. It's like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> like, hey, what, look at me now. This is me. I'm actually walking on the water. I wonder if the disciples are looking at me now. And I mean, this is great. This is great. This is exciting. This is awesome. But wait a minute. I can't do this. And then Peter starts to doubt. And then Peter starts to sink. Lord, I'm sinking. Save me. So Jesus reaches out. Oh, you Peter, you idiot. Why did you doubt? Now, why did Peter sink? Why? It's because Peter was too heavy. Just kidding. <laughs> Some of you are like, mm, heavy, mm, yeah. No. Okay, you know, you guys all know the easy children's ministry, the Sunday school answer is, yeah, Peter didn't have enough faith. Peter doubted. But my question is, why? I mean, why? I mean, I mean, he was actually walking on the water, right? When he got out of the boat, it's not like he immediately splashed, that's it. No, no, no. When he got out of the boat, he was actually walking on the water. He was doing the impossible. It was a miracle. Then what happened? Why? Why did he doubt? Why did he not have enough faith? Because he, he was doing it. You see, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. Maybe the wind was getting stronger. Maybe the waves. But for some reason, <laughs> he was distracted. And he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he thought, this, what am I doing? This, this is impossible. I can't do this. You know, this is, like, this is a lot like us. We pray, God, Help me to overcome my, my sinful, sinful habit. God, help me out in this situation. God, I, I need that job out there. And for a few days, yeah, that sin is no problem. That situation is going to be okay. That prayer is going to be answered. No problems with your temper or lust for attention. I mean, things are great. I mean, things are, <laughs> wow. Wow. And then a few days later, your wife says something and you just lose your temper. Or you go back to that, that habit that you thought was over and there you are. Pornography, getting drunk, we're doing drugs. It's like, dang it. I thought that situation was done, but oh, what's going on? What was I thinking? This is impossible. Man, don't walk on water. You were doing so well. I mean, things were looking good. I mean, that situation was good. I mean, you were walking on the water. Yeah. And then, bam, you fall down. Whose strength were you depending on? Yours or God? If Peter was depending on his own strength, he had no chance against the water. As soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus and he thought, I am doing this, at the same time, he knew, I can't do this because man don't walk on water. You pray, God, God, help me to get that promotion. God, help me to become godly. I want that. God, help me to get into a good school. And then you start listening to your friends or co-workers. <laughs> you want to get into that school? Nah, sorry, man. You're not the smart type. Forget about it. What? You want that job? <laughs> now, people like you don't get jobs like that. <laughs> nah, no offense, but uh, come on, man. What? You want to be godly and spiritual? Uh, come on, man. Keep it real. That, that, that ain't you, man. That, nah. What, me? Serve at church? <sighs> I'm too busy. And you start b believing these lies. You get distracted by the wind and the waves. And you think, yeah, give it up. Man don't walk on water. 
Man don't walk on water. I'll never be a doctor with, with four C's. I'll never be spiritual or godly. I'll never overcome my anger or my depression. My uncle can't be cured of cancer. I can't fix my relationship problems. It's impossible. It's impossible. Oh, yeah? You're right. You're right. It's impossible. Man, don't walk on water. It's impossible for man. But do you remember the rest of the verse that says, but with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. As long as we fix our eyes on the problems, on the wind and the waves, you're right. You can't be spiritual. You can't fix your problems. No, you can't get into that college or get that job. Forget about it. You can't, you can't, you can't. But God can. Faith is saying, even though I can't, God can. So what are you doing? Fixing your eyes on the problems. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Peter didn't sink because he doubted Jesus. He knew that Jesus could do miracles. He knew that he could walk on water. Peter didn't doubt the power of Jesus. Even us, we don't wonder, oh, can God do this? No, but we think, will he for me? And if we don't think he's going to help us, well, I better help myself, and I got to do it myself. And you hear it everywhere. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself. Even Mariah Carey sings, a hero lies in you. Or don't stop believing. You know, that's not faith. That's just positive thinking. Yes, believing in yourself can help you overcome some obstacles. Believing in yourself can help you reach some goals. But it can't do miracles. And it can't walk on water. I don't know if you've ever heard false preachers say stuff like, oh, are you poor? It's because you don't have enough faith. Are you sick? It's because you don't have enough faith. You've got to have more faith to be rich and all that. What? Really? You know, all the apostles died poor. Maybe they didn't have enough faith. Or maybe you've heard people at church or your friends say, oh, just believe. Don't doubt. Just believe. But what does that even mean? Because faith in faith is nothing. What, what is faith in faith? Faith isn't some like energy that you get more of, like I need more of that substance. What is, what is faith? We're not talking about faith in faith. The power of faith itself. Believing in things that are unbelievable. Somebody once asked me, if you have enough faith, can you walk on water? <laughs> what do you think? Okay, imagine the holiest person you know. The holiest person. Maybe it's Pastor Tyler, or maybe it's one of your friends, this guy who's always in the Word, or this grandmother who's always praying. The holiest person you know. And this person is going to walk on water. Water is at the edge of the pool. She, she fasted for three days. He's prayed for hours. The television crews are there to record, to, to broadcast what's going on. I mean, what, a, what, a, what an incredible testimony this would be as people see with their own eyes a miracle happening. Wow. And, and this guy is ready. He's prepared himself. He's fasted. I mean, he's wearing a suit. I mean, if you're wearing, like, swimsuit, I mean, that's not faith, right? I mean, but you're going to walk on water. He's wearing a brand new suit. You don't want to get that wet. He's wearing a watch. That's not waterproof. Oh, <laughs> Or she's a grandma, and she just got a, a new grandma perm. You know, if you got a perm, you can't get that wet. You know? <laughs> she's ready. She's ready. Right there at the edge of the pool. And as she steps out into the water, what's going to happen? Fool's going to get wet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because faith in faith is nothing. But if Jesus says, if Jesus was there, come to me on the water. Now, that's a totally different story, because that's the difference between faith and faith. Versus faith in the words of Jesus. We're not talking about faith in faith. I don't care how much faith you have. Because faith in faith means nothing. I don't care how much you prayed for this to happen. If this 
isn't God's will, it's never going to happen. Never, ever, ever. But if God wants you to do that, and that is 10 times more impossible than this, you try doing that, you're going to see a miracle. Where is your faith? On how much you prayed? On how much you believe as if that means something? Or is your faith in the words of Jesus? Is your faith, is your, are your eyes fixed on Jesus? When Jesus said, why did you doubt? He was not saying, why did you doubt yourself? Because it's not about believing in yourself. Why oh, I believe I can walk on water. No, he was saying, why did you doubt? Because he was saying, why did you doubt me? And Peter doubted because he wasn't looking at Jesus. He got distracted by the wind and the waves. He got distracted by the problems that he was facing right now. And we go, oh, thanks, Jesus. I see you, but you know, oh, the wind, the waves. Sometimes what's right in, far, right in front of us seems bigger than everything else, even bigger than Jesus. Now, I'm not saying ignore the waves. I'm not saying your problems are nothing. I'm not saying just ignore what's going on in your life. Just, just, just go to church and be a Christian. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. You, you see the waves. You hear the wind. I'm not saying those don't exist. You hear the wind and, and it's screaming like a hurricane. Things are happening in your life that's like crazy. God, what the heck? You hear the wind, but is that all you hear? You see the waves, but is that all you see? Do you see Jesus? And Jesus, he sees your problems. He sees the wind. He sees the waves, but he sees you. But do you see him? Can you fix your eyes on Jesus? Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't get distracted. You could be distracted even by the good things in your life. Good things like friends, school, hobbies, work. But remember this. Just because it's good doesn't mean it's right. Just because it's good doesn't mean it's right. Because sometimes the good is the enemy of the best. And what's the best? What God wants for you. What God desires for your life. And we don't always see what's best, but God does. But can you see Jesus? Your friends, are, friends are good. Doing well at your school or doing well at work is good. Sports is good. But if they take the place of Jesus, they are your enemies. Because sometimes the good is the enemy of the best. Are you going to let even the good things pull you down? Are you going to let your friends tell you what to think? Are you going to let them make you sink? Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus who makes the impossible possible. Verse 33, then those in the boat worshipped him. I hope you understand worship is given only to God. And thus, they recognized Jesus as God. And this is the proper response when Jesus shows up. Worship. He's not looking for a pat on the back. He's not asking for a favor or more offering. He is God. He is worthy of worship. He desires worship, and that's what he wants. And that's why we come here Sunday morning, because he is worthy of that worship. Now, let me end this short message with one last look at Peter. You know, Jesus is God. I mean, we know that. So being God, Jesus knew the future. He knew that Peter would fail. He knew that he would come out of the boat and start thinking, Jesus, save me. Yeah. And yet, he told Peter to come out anyway. Peter says, Jesus, tell me to come out of the boat and onto the water with you. And Jesus could have said, uh, Peter, uh, stay in the boat. 
Uh, I know it's going to happen. Trust me. I know the future. I know you're going to come out and you're going to make a fool out of yourself. So Peter, stay in the boat. No, he didn't say that. Because when it comes to faith, he wants us to take a chance. He says, come, take the leap of faith. Come and follow me. Because the essence, the essence of faith, or maybe the definition of faith, is risk. To take a chance. High risk, high reward, right? But high risk is risky. It was high risk when the disciples decided to follow Jesus. It was high risk when Martin Luther started the Reformation. It was high risk for American missionaries to go into China in the early, early 1900s. Most of them just died. But faith isn't faith unless risk is involved, right? I mean, think about it. If it's well calculated with no chance of failure, then it's not faith. It's fact. Yeah, living out the Christian life is hard. There is sacrifice. There is risk. But to take that leap of faith means to embrace that risk. Following Jesus requires risk because the spirit of faith is risk. If you've never risked anything for Jesus Christ, I wonder if you have real faith. Because it's risky to follow Jesus. It's risky to live the Christian life. It's risky because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where God's going to lead. But faith means you trust that He, even though you can't see what's going to happen, Jesus sees it. And all you need to see is Jesus. Fixing your eyes on Him. That means even, if, even when you're afraid, you just got to jump in the water. Now, my family, we just came back from uh, the Great Wolf Lodge. Have you guys been there? Garden Grove? It's, it's awesome. We had lots of fun. It's like an indoor water park. But the thing is, I don't like swimming. <laughs> my wife says it's because I don't know how to swim. But I know how to swim, all right? I do. But, but I... <laughs> It's not fun because I swim to survive. It's not fun. I'm just trying to stay alive. Just stay, stay alive. That, that's my swimming method. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't learn how to swim just by reading a book about it. You can't learn how to swim by watching some YouTube videos. I mean, to swim, you just got to jump in the water. Just move your arms and do something. Try to stay alive, you know. <laughs> do something. I mean, that's how you learn. The Christian life is not a life you learn from a book or a sermon. You don't live out your faith by sitting in a chair. It's a life that you live out loud. As you take these risks for Jesus, even when you don't know what's going to happen with your life, with your job, with your faith, it's a life that you live out loud. It's a life in which you just jump in the water. When you decide to follow Jesus, Yes, you might fall along the way. You might get distracted. You ain't always going to walk on water. But Jesus wants us to come out and take a chance anyway. Because he knows you can't walk on water unless your feet get wet. You might think, my friend will never become a Christian. I don't, why should I invite him to church? He makes fun of God. I mean, fun of church. I mean, nah. Nah. Take a chance. But he'll laugh at me. Take that leap of faith and go out into the water. You never know what's going to happen. You think, but I'll never be a strong Christian. The Bible is boring. I don't know what to pray when I, when I pray. I mean, it's, uh, it's impossible. Why keep trying? Get out of the boat. It's impossible only if you stay in the boat. It's impossible only if you stay in the boat. But as soon as you go out into the water, it's a whole new ball game. As soon as you get out of the boat, nothing is impossible. Amen? Amen. And you will overcome temptation. Nothing is impossible. You will become a doctor. Nothing is impossible. 
You will get that job. Nothing is impossible. That disease will be cured. Nothing is impossible. And you will be godly, on fire for God, through the strength of Him who makes all things possible. Amen? That's right. So take that leap of faith and go out into the water. Fix your eyes on Jesus and take a chance. Take a chance. Get out of the boat and into the water. And you just might see a miracle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, the God of miracles, the God of the wind and the waves, the God who is sovereign over all the stuff that's going on in my life. Through the wind and the waves, you cut through all that. And you see me. And God, you see that I need you. And sometimes, I got to be honest, sometimes, God, it just feels like I'm not, you're not there. I don't hear you. I don't see you. All I see is the waves. All I hear is the wind. But God, help me to cut through all that to you. Help me to fix my eyes on you, even though I don't know where you're leading, even though I don't know where this is all going. God, I want to put my faith, I want to put my trust in you. God, I'm not saying it's easy, and God, I'm so not perfect. But so God, I'm asking you now, would you help me? Because I want to. I want to just follow you. And even though I'm nervous, even though it's kind of tricky, even though there's so much stuff going on, I can't even feel what's under my feet. But as I take your hand and follow your voice, would you help me to see through the clouds, through the storm, to see you? Because, God, I just want to follow you through the waves, through the wind. And maybe I'll just see for myself that I'm just walking on the water with you. So, God, help me. And in Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. At this time, I want to invite the communion ushers to come on out. And as we take this time to uh, take communion together, would you take this time to meditate and uh, confess your sins and take this time to really consider how the blood of Christ and the body that was broken for us makes a difference in our lives. As you take the bread and the wine, let's take some time to meditate. And at the end, I'm going to take it all together. So would you take this time to do so?
Father, we come before you as your people, the people you died for, you shed your blood for, you broke your body for. And Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that you paid on that cross to forgive us of our sins and to make us your people, your children. But not only did you die, but you also rose again, giving us new hope of being with you forever. And until that day we see face to face, Lord, we will celebrate you and your death and resurrection. So we thank you for this time of communion, where we commune with you and with one another in the faith. And we thank you that not only was that something that you did 2,000 years ago, but it's a work that you still do in us, that you renew us day by day. Thank you, Jesus. And in Christ's name we pray this. Amen. 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 Spirit and 
He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He's conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. songs we sing in our weakness and temptations we believe Church living loud, God will say we believe, we believe, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Power of God has torn the veil. No, your love never fail. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. In us to life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. That He's coming back. He's coming back again. Yeah. He's coming back again. people that if we see something we agree with to say amen and I want to say an amen to everything we've just been through amen yeah. amen uh, and I shout a hearty amen to this message that Jason has brought to us today yeah. I, amen I think Woo. it's a uh, a prophetic voice for us in this church today that God still speaks through his word by the power of his spirit and that he's calling us to be a people that have faith in him alone and that we will take a risk in our faith to step out of the boat and join him on his mission. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right, let's do the takeaway together. It's not just a good summary for the message, but it's how we live life outside of the boat. So let's read Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 together. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. God, please go in peace to the Lord bless you. We believe in God Father. Crucifixion. 